Hey everybody, this is Dark Guardsman. We're back with another video here. So we're still using the uh, gaming headset that we did with the last few videos, but uh, we're gonna just keep going and eventually I'll get in a, a better microphone. Uh, anyways, for this one, I want to work more on the AI. So we were working on the AI followers. We got the followers working really well. I went ahead and actually did buy the pro package of the pathfinding software we used to get local avoidance. Uh, the entire purpose of doing this was just to keep the tanks from colliding with each other. So it was looking really bad and we are getting close to getting a functional game going here. So I figured, you know what, I'll buy this. It's uh, like a one-time purchase and then I can use it for any future game I need to. Because even though I know how to code pathfinders, I really just don't want to. So you can see these guys are keeping really good distance on either side of me, and they actually are pretty much uh, trying to avoid each other. I've got the avoidance set really, really high, uh, but it is really simple to set up. This is one of the reasons why I bought this package to start with, is I don't have to actually do anything. And why did that... I guess there was a zoom level thing. Um, so we actually have the tanks here. So the local avoidance, how it actually works in these, if I can unclip uh, that off there is you put an ROV controller on whatever you want to actually have avoid stuff. Uh, you set up basically its layer, what it collides with, with this and priorities and everything else. Uh, you then put a simulator uh, basically anywhere in the world, doesn't matter where it's at. The, how it, according to the website, how it works is that the script that is on the tank will just wrapper the simulator here and just provide it some data. The simulator theoretically does all the work and I kind of have somewhat of a grasp of what it might be doing. It might just be iterating through basically everything and going, okay, this is like the distance you guys are from each other. And if you want to move, like if you want to actually be moved from like here to here, we're going to calculate uh, with everybody else and figure out where they're moving and try to make sure we aren't colliding with each other and everything else. Uh, you can change how much frame rate it does and the website basically says you could go as low as 10 and you would still get perfectly fine uh, actual movement with this. Uh, and there are a couple examples, which actually, let's pop up one of their examples real quick. Since we're not really doing anything in this level, actually, I do need to still save the level because it, it probably has been edited. But we do have it in here. Uh, I just literally overwrote the free version with the pro version, so I probably actually do need to reinstall it to get it uh, to properly reinstall. Uh, but if we go and find the example package, and I'm like spacing out here. There actually should be an example right there, example scenes. I was looking for the word example, but not scenes, and my brain just glossed over it. So you got a ton of examples in here to show you how to do all the stuff here. The website also has documentation on it. The website's pretty good, um, but we're not going to go to it because it'll take me a while to navigate through it. And they've got two versions of it, ROV and ROV Lightweight. Uh, the Lightweight version is a little nicer than the ROV version, but the ROV version does have 3D uh, geometry in it, so it's uh, you can get a basically... Uh, a much better feel for what is kind of going on and let me try to get to where the main camera is. The level, I even though it's kind of 2D, it is 3D in this, this. And you can kind of see the geometry. I'm not sure what happened to the train. I'm assuming the train was actually supposed to be textured, but it's pink right now and... Yeah, you can see it's supposed to have blue checkered ground. That's clearly not blue. Orange ground. That's clearly not orange. Um, it's using the legacy shaders. That's why it's not working. We can update this real quick. Uh, let's just go with diffuse. Ah, it's not gonna work. Oh well, it doesn't really matter though because it will actually still run. Um, it's probably just breaking because I have the lightweight pipeline render engine in here uh, to actually make my scenes look a little nicer. But it does run and you can see it. And it, it it's, there's no real interaction with this as far as I can tell, but you can watch the little guys move around. And it'll show that they are, for the most part, avoiding running into each other. You see them bottling up over here, but they're not getting stuck on each other, which is the whole reason I got local avoidance. Uh, I wanted to get the local avoidance for this is because when we had a lot of AIs clustered near each other, they would get stuck. They would physically just not want to move because they were all stuck on top of each other. And you can see they can move through each other. And this is really, really impressive when you think about it. As most people take this for granted in a lot of games that AIs do this, but this is actually not something that is simple. After all, I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. So it's probably not simple at all. Um, although I probably could have found a paper that explained it and wrote my own version of it, but a lot of work, not really needed. So this actually does this, and it, they just they, essentially what this script I think does it just makes it go from one side to the other, which is really cool. And then the lightweight version does give us a lot more options. Uh, so let's go pop over to that one. I think we are in the lightweight one. Yeah, actually that switched really fast. 
Through the Lightweight One, the Lightweight One is pretty much a similar scene, except uh, there's no actual geometry from the run-in. Instead, what this is designed to be used for is you can actually really see what it's doing. You can test uh, the number of stuff. So if we flip it up to 5,000, you can see this runs. And I don't know what our frame rate's at right now. Uh, I wish they really included an FPS counter at some point in here. Uh, and I don't have my normal overlay FPS, but it doesn't look like OBS is uh, dying here. Actually, I could probably, there should be, in OBS, there should be some kind of tool here that will show me if we're losing frames. You guys can just stare at the mess down there, which looks like it's, fro well, yeah, first guy tabbed out. Uh, do 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 do. That's really weird. There should be like a like toll of some kind on OBS, but I don't can't simply find it, which is unfortunate. So we're gonna just go back to staring at it. Um, I wish you would let me zoom in. You know what we could do real quick is we can go over here to the game screen, maximize on play. There we go. So we can get a much better view here, and it lets you like go up in size and. I mean, it puts 5,000 here. I can tell it is slowing down at 5,000 simply just because my computer is probably not that good of a computer. I'm running uh, some AMD chip that is equivalent to pretty much between an i3 and an i5. I really do need to upgrade it at some point, but cache is not a thing, so it will be a while before that it gets upgraded. But they do move around. I mean, like, for 5,000 objects moving around in the scene, this is really, really nice. And I bet if you probably tie this in with, like, the NED component or creation system, whatever it's called, uh, and then tied it in with a few other things, this, you probably could get like millions of objects moving around in the scene without it just choking on itself. Uh, let's hit play again after I downscale it, and we'll show a few of the other options here. So let's get down to 10, because I just want to see a small number. So you can see them moving lines and stuff, and what they'll do is they'll smack into each other, or I think they go through each other, actually. I didn't actually wait for this one to finish last time I was looking at it because it just took so long to get across the screen and the camera was just slowly zooming in until it smacks into everything. Yeah, I think it was supposed to show them actually avoiding each other, which is really cool. They got a circle version, which will keep going in, and it will just basically, they'll all collide with each other. Or so we're supposed to collide with each other. They actually are moving around each other. It was, I think it was at like a, one of the larger scales, it was having some difficulties. Yeah, it was the larger scale was having difficulty simply because like they started getting up to a, a really high amount. But to some extent, it's still working. Like you can see them trying to rotate. It's it's really cool. It was Point that also was the one. I think Circle didn't have problem. I think it was Point because uh, basically they were all trying to go to the same spot. So they just collide with each other eventually. Still though, that's not bad. And you get the crossing one, which, uh, see if this one actually does anything. This one kind of varies. I've actually seen it, like, put, like, actual multiple lines before. But I think because we have a low number, it's actually just nothing. Yeah, you can see, like, literally they're going through each other, which is what I want. I want basically this nice, beautiful flow of AIs moving around. Because we're gonna have, uh, basically a small scarab-like unit in the game. Um, and I probably should use the word scarab because the first thing somebody's going to think is like Halo games. Uh, what I'm thinking of is like the actual bug scarab. You think of the scene from the Mummies movie uh, where you see these little bugs basically swarm a person. That's kind of what I'm going for is to being able to get a whole bunch of those and they need to be able to avoid each other because there's going to be, they're going to be swarming the player and the player is going to need to basically mow them down and shoot them and everything. Um, but yeah, this works really cool. So we're going to implement a little bit of this. Uh, I don't know too much about it, so our implementation is going to be kind of more guesswork than it is going to be me telling you what we're actually doing. As I still am reading through the documentation, the documentation is kind of lacking. It took me, I think, almost an hour of reading through documentation just to figure out we could use our existing pathfinders with uh, the local avoidance because they actually are supported, even though the older documentation said it wasn't supported, but the newer documentation does say it's supported. So we'll get into our missions. So we're going to go back to mission one. There we go. And what we're going to do is the main part I want to focus on is kind of this frontal area right here. So we have spawn points here. We have stuff that actually does spawn and it actually will 
attack the wall. I dropped the number of guns down because I do actually want things. And why does stuff keep disappearing when I zoom in? I'm in 2D, aren't I? 2D? Yeah. Like, that is weird that we are physically having stuff disappear. I'm not going to worry about it, though. There's probably something wrong with the camera. So let me let me change the local avoidance up here real quick. So local avoidance script is very simple, just RV controller, and as far as I can tell, what this is used for is essentially just asks uh, the, what movement speed it should be going at. So when you actually go say I want to move between point A and B, it goes, hey, you need to be moving at this speed to get from there to there, to be, based on how fast you want to move. So I think you pass it a vector and it passes you back another vector. So I think this script right here, which actually is doing our movement, will talk to this one down here and actually move everything. Uh, but I'm going to drop its avoidance radius down to like 2. Uh, one thing to know with the local avoidance, they do not actually respond to colliders. So these guys won't actually avoid colliders on their own. So we are relying on the Pathfinder to do that for us. And then the avoidance script is going to just keep it from colliding with uh, the other tank. I'm going to have to put a collider eventually on the player. Um, just to keep stuff from colliding with it. The weird thing about that is I actually do want certain entities to collide with it, so we're probably going to have to do a separate collision layer, because we have like the default layer, uh, agent layer here. But in theory, we're going to probably want to use some kind of different layer, but I'll have to read up on that. Uh, we probably could actually just change how it collides. Yeah, it looks good. I just want to make sure I got that down to a more reasonable number, so that way the tanks are not like a huge distance from uh, the player. Does it give me a gizmo for these? Uh, we still have the gizmo for the Pathfinder. It's weird, like, actually, no, there's a debug gizmo. Let me, let me turn the gizmo off for the uh, Seeker, I believe. Let's see which one out here. I know if we don't lose power here as well as it's been uh, lightning and thunder, like, nonstop. So, I got the Seeker gizmo turned off, but I'm not seeing an update. Is there another gizmo in here? There we go. I got the gizmo. So I want to see this thing debug. I'm not actually seeing a debug. I was hoping there would be a gizmo drawn here, but it's not there. Oh well. At least, uh, at least the gizmo's off for the tanks in general, which I kind of like. So I'll kind of show you what's going on with these guys down here, which is the reason why we need to work on them, is that uh, they're essentially not doing what I want them to do. I want them to charge the guns, um, but they're the other scripts have usually come into play and I need to unmaximize the game. Hopefully, ah, oh, it's gonna maximize again. So we'll do that again, and and get rid of the maximization, so I can flip over to the scene tab. Okay. So we need to drive down here. This isn't triggered until I hit this point right here. And if we flip over to the scene, you can see that they path forward, but as soon as they get within shooting range, they stop moving, which is what the script's designed to do. But we need to fix this because I need them to be like rushing this gun position to give the player a sense of danger, a sense of urgency that his mission is kind of important. Because the mission we're going to go with actually on this one is uh, the player is going to be set in a scouting role. It's going to be like, hey, you need to scout forward and clear a path for the rest of us while we finish uh, unloading the landers and everything else. Is that like camera? No, the camera probably doesn't exist inside the game. It's just a scene view. I am using a beta version of Unity, so this is not surprising this is happening just really annoying because if I wanted to come in here and do decorations now I can't see any of the trucks. What is their, what is their render layer set to? They are set to entity render layer zero. Let me set them to one just because I can. That is not making a, any difference whatsoever. Whatever, we'll have to deal with it. Probably restarting uh, Unity will fix it later. So we'll get, we want to work on the scripts. What I want to do is create, in that same script we were working on, uh, some kind of stop distance. We're going to just do that on the tanks here. Because I want to do them on the tank as well. Because the tank will stop as well, which is really annoying. You need the, you want the tanks to be following the player. And that's the wrong script to edit. Get rid of that one, get rid of that one. You can see all of our vehicles we have planned here. At this point, I'm not even trying to keep it hidden. Probably should just make a website and just list off everything we're going to be working on. And then that way people can go through and go, oh yeah, that's really cool. So, we have a current objective thing. 
and we have a current target. But the current target will still basically stops when you can shoot. So what we want to do is we want to create a uh, basically stopping distance. So this will be target stop distance. And we're going to set this to like 10F by default. So we say, okay, you cannot stop moving towards the target until you're at a certain distance or you can't path, but distance works too. So for the most part, the distance check should work just fine. Uh, so this one, we're going to need this variable here. This one's going to be weird because... Do we want it to chase the target? Or do we want it to move towards the objective? Because theoretically, we do want it to attack the target first. But we also don't want it to be like chasing the target into an unnecessary area. So, uh, which we're going to have to create another variable called chase distance and then give it like a home position. So like wherever it spawned from, don't go further than this from your spawn point. But that's going to take a while to do. So for starters, we're going to do this. Uh, it means we're going to have to move this. It means if we have a target, we're never going to be able to get down here now. Um, yeah, this will just be how we have to do it. Shooting target array. So, we want to create an OR statement pretty much. If this is less than equal to zero, or distance is less than target distance, and we'll probably do less than equal to target distance as well. But pretty much, if it's less than equal to zero, then we basically ignore the whole statement. Uh, for this reason, like if you actually turn this to zero and like just did not want that behavior turned on, then you can have it basically turned off. And it will just always stop when it can shoot the player, which could be useful in some cases. Say, for example, a boss might be one to do that. Uh, we could have flying units that you don't want to have moving too close to the player. Uh, but you may want to have other units that actually do uh, move towards the player, have an appropriate distance check. I think I also need to mess with the shoot up uh, target script because I noticed the player tanks would keep stopping like back here, but the targets would be down here, and they wouldn't be shooting. And I think what was happening is that the weapon shoot at target thing was saying, yeah, we can shoot the target, but our weapons cannot shoot the target. So I need to make sure the scripts actually recognize uh, that when they have the potential. What I probably need to do is make a method in the fire, uh, for the f make a similar method to the fire method in the weapon, as, as like like do fire or something, so we could pass a boolean into the fire and be like, hey, if this is false, only simulate firing, so do like just a ray choice check and check to see if you can actually hit the target. Uh, I'll probably make a separate method like can hit target or something, or can actually activate, or is it within proper distance. Although I don't think the weapons have a check like that. So we may have to do that on the shootout target, we just have to modify it. Either way, let's get the distance check running. This, this code should, in theory, run if I didn't mess up the target here. So the target should be a game object, uh, I think. What is current target actually? So current target should be stored on entity mob. It'll error out in a second if we don't have it right. And yeah, it's not right. And it does not contain a definition, so it already answered the question for us. So current target is an entity script, so we want to do game object transform position. It's a really long piece of code, but oh well. That should compile. And that should default to 10 on the mobs. We'll have to drag the mobs out and actually change them. Uh, we really do need to get some proper textures for the mobs as well. I have uh, a work in progress texture that I made a while ago, but I'm not sure I actually want to use it because it kind of just doesn't fit the theme anymore. But yeah, script should run. Distance check. I kind of don't want to be running a distance check every fixed update. It just feels weird. I might need to create like a method in here called like update cycle. Like how often should we be updating? We could create a simple amp because fixed update should run effectively once every so many frames. Or it's supposed to be once per no, no, it's once every so many frames. It's like this should be like thirty should be like thirty updates a second or something like that. Actually let's Google this real quick and ignore that. I was actually getting ready to watch a video before we started recording. Um 
So Unity fixed update frequency. It can be changed, I know that much. Uh, they've only got a video here. Why are they use delta time in here? Like, this should be always the same if it's in there. So we'll check the time manager. Oh, so there actually, there actually is a time manager it would tell us. Time manager lets you set properties globally. Um, what's the default to? It says fixed time step is 0 0.2. So that would be 20 milliseconds? So that means 50 updates a second? No, that doesn't sound right. Let's, like, let's go check the game. So if there is one in here, that's going to be down in uh, project settings. And yeah, time. It is set to point 0.2. So I'm going to say minutes in seconds. Uh, so that means, yeah, it's going to be 20 milliseconds. So yeah, 20 milliseconds step, that's going to be we getting 50 updates a second. Because 5 would bring it up to 100, and then one more zero would bring it to 1. Maximum allowed time step, time scale, maximum particle time step. And then... I know update is going to be something weird. I might change this, because I don't really need the fixed update rate to be very high. So I might put this at 5. I gotta go check to see what else I use a fixed update before I mess with it. But we don't really need the game to be updated that fast. So at least we know that's going to run against the rate. So if it is consistent, what we can do is we can just put it in here, and we can do ticks between updates, and we can set this to five. So we say like, hey, I'm going to wait five ticks before I do anything, and then we make a private variable uh, called timer. So int uh, tick update timer. Set that to zero. So we're going to go if uh, ticks update timer minus minus is less than equal to zero. Then we basically reset. We're going to do a countdown timer instead of a count up timer. I've got like in the custom of doing these now because they're a lot easier to work with. Because then you can just set the timer to whatever you need it to be rather than doing what I used to do, which is like basically count up and then check if your value was at. So that should work. So that should basically keep us from getting too many updates. I think there might even be a way just to set this fixed update cycle for the whole object. I remember something about this a while back, that you can actually set the update rates of individual objects. If that is the case, we'll have to go find that variable. But this should work. It should keep our stuff from updating too fast, which is actually a good thing too, because this is going to keep the Pathfinder from turning on and off really quickly. So you may get objects that end up closer or further away than they need to be, because the whole point of this script is just to really keep stuff from A, running into things, uh, and B, from like doing stupid stuff. So, Because this is going to handle all the basically Pathfinding logic, is what, or turning the Pathfinder on and off, setting the targets and everything. Or that, well, there's not a script to set the target, but yeah, you guys get the idea. So let's go ahead and test the script. Uh, we do need to drag the entity out and then update it though. Uh, you know what, 10 should default well, pretty well on this. Because 10 is going to be like the distance from over there. So we should be able to just run out here, trigger the script, and then test it. What I need to do is make a test arena for the, just for these videos, uh, so we can actually test things going on. I really like how those guys are following. I don't like how they twitch so much. Maybe I can do something to keep them from twitching. I think the uh, Pathfinder does have an ability to like course correct, but to be honest, the player is really not going to care. And they are coming closer. Oh yeah, they're getting with a weapon range now, so we get to see them actually shoot. Uh, the tur turrets are immortal though, so that doesn't really matter. Now if I can only get the turrets to actually hit things. Well, that's really a problem with... Um, the turrets have a default inaccuracy on the guns of like 2%, and it's just enough that's messing with things. And I'm being pushed. Oh no, I'm not being pushed. The the guy is being locally avoided. No, let's just drive around real quick. I'm going to see what these guys do. Okay, go, go, drive around. I had like one of these drift on me the other day. I was like, I stopped and it drifted down below me. Let's see if it does it again. Nah, it's not going to do it again. These are running really well, though. I'm like tempted to make another game now where we just have a whole bunch of stuff follow you around as you just explore. 
because they they path okay like a little bit of tweaking a little bit of adjustments and these would look pretty good we just got to get them where they're not doing this thing where they're kind of slightly moving or pushing me I don't think I'm being pushed I think it's literally just backing up and, and moving back forward see what happens if they try to go through the crystals oh they avoided I was half expecting them to try to go through the crystals, because there technically is a path through these crystals, if I can... Let me try this. See if they'll follow me if I get stuck in the crystals. The crystals don't have a perfect hitbox. They make some too lazy to make... Oh my god, it followed me. <laughs> Let's see. Go this way. Okay, I'm trying to find a way through the path of these guys. I know there is a way to get through here, but to be honest, the colliders are close enough together that it is hard. And they're making a really good attempt to follow me through the crystals. This actually reminds me that I need to make a um, script that you can teleport out of stuff if you get stuck in it, because that's probably going to happen. Anyways, I'll leave you guys here and we'll be back with another video.